Yeah, you can see some angry Indians. Yeah, not only did they get smashed, but so did their TVs. Douche. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah India versus Pakistan You said it first, you opened by saying the mother of all battles It's always been considered a big deal in cricket and yesterday was no different But this is possibly going to be the most viewed sporting event uh, for a long long It was a match that hadn't happened for three years the match was so close to being cancelled because of what was going on in the disputed region of Kashmir and Pakistan had lost 12 times before that and Alhamdulillah it did take place because India lost embarrassingly I'm proud to be a Pakistani! Now yesterday's match was very important why because in the last couple of years I'd say the last 5-6 years have been quite bad in India because of the BJP ruling party which is let's face it discriminating religious minorities and empowering the Hindu extremists All people not equal? All people are not equal Muslims do not deserve equal rights to apply for citizenship There's no such as equal rights they're not in an equal category It's turned into a very weird place so Kashmiris and Muslims watched <laughs> with a lot of anticipation so they could vicariously live through that match and get some sort of justice but rest assured it is a game at the end of the day you know what I'm saying if Modi was playing they would be it would be different yeah but these are people that let's face it they're not political inherently so when you had a Pakistani minister saying look this is a victory for Islam no, 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 yeah, you can't be saying that because what you're doing is you're assuming that the, pre the previous 12 defeats were defeats of Islam. What? But it was mostly what happened afterwards that I want to discuss, yeah. <laughs> Here you can see some angry Indians, yeah, not only did they get smashed, but so did their TVs and both of their own doing. <laughs> Number two, Muhammad Shami, the only Muslim who played in the Indian cricket team after the match because he gave away uh, I think the most runs, he was getting smashed, called a Pakistani, you know, insulted, abused, you name it. And some people had to come to his defense but it's unfortunate that the players like Virat Kohli and MS Dhoni they didn't come forward which is ironic because we see this happening in a few countries in this country England when the black players missed penalties they were faced with racist abuse and I thought the Indian team would have understood and appreciated this because they were seen taking a knee before the match so they know about discrimination but it's unfortunate that they are yet to speak out. And if you think I'm blowing this out of proportion, let's look at Rohit Sharma who made zero runs. My guy made zero runs but yet the Muslim is the one being abused mate. And number three, the Indians are saying yo Kashmir is part of us, these are our people, it ain't a democracy, free speech, yeah why don't they want to be with the with the Indians? Well I'll tell you why because now you can see them celebrating a Pakistani victory but that's not good enough for the Indians, yeah? They're not letting them celebrate the freedom of speech, they're there waiting with sticks and beating them and whacking them. Certain pictures I can't show because the video is going to get flagged but this was not the time to be swinging and hitting, that's all I'm saying. That should have been done in the game. And number four, yeah. At the end of the match he was seen hugging a Pakistani player. Of course, seeing as there's tensions between these two nations, it makes sense to show the average individual that yo, you can, you know, be friends and, you know, keep your hate at a certain level. Don't let it go above a toxic level, you know what I'm saying? But look at the messages my man was getting, it's ridiculous, yeah? But you might be thinking what about Pakistan, yeah? What were these dons doing? I'll tell you what they were doing, here's the front cover of a newspaper of Pakistan celebrating this. But these are the evil Pakistanis isn't it? Putting all that to the side, the thing that really caught my attention was our main man Muhammad Rizwan. 
That's right, a Pakistani cricket player who, during the match, when there was a break, he prayed his salah. And if that's not all, he also got the job done. He was not out with 79 runs. That's right, my guy doing the job on and off the pitch. He realizes that no matter how successful he becomes, because in Pakistan, being a cricketer is like being a footballer. You're treated like royalty. Yet the whole country knows your name, mate. Yet he still understands, appreciates, and cherishes his connection with Allah. Doesn't matter who's watching, doesn't matter the game, he knows he's going to die one day and meet his Creator, his Lord. And the first thing on the Day of Judgment he'll be asked will be about his prayer. He realizes this, no matter if you're a king or whether you're a pauper, you'll be asked and it is your duty, a fard, an obligation for you to thank Allah for all that he's given you. We don't pray because Allah needs it. We pray because Allah deserves it. It's our way of thanking Allah. Somebody gives you a gift, I mean thank you, <laughs> it's the least you can do. But Allah doesn't need a thank you, He's told you how He wants to be thanked. Guys, no matter where you are, this is a free connection, free connection for all that you bow your head down in front of Allah. This was how Moses prayed, how Jesus prayed, and how Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon them all prayed. So whatever problem and hardship you're going through, by all means, deal with the problem at hand. Yeah, do what you can, what's in your means, and do not forego your prayer. Both things go hand in hand. Do your best, Allah will do the rest. And one tip I'm going to leave you with, whilst instilling salah, in your children, don't always ask, have you prayed mate? Why haven't you prayed? You, so you have prayed, yeah? Ask them, now that you've prayed, how does it make you feel? You should do something and that way you're going to instill into your children that Salah is something more important than mere movements. Till next time, <laughs> Assalamu Alaikum.